from Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. JC listed diversified materials company AfriSam has implemented various initiatives to reduce its carbon intensity and develop responses to limit the impact of a carbon tax. Skalkberger has a story. AfriSam is using its most efficient plants and production lines to reduce as far as possible the carbon intensity of its products and limit the impact of the imminent implementation of a carbon tax. During a tour of AfriSam's Dudfield cement plant in Northwest, the company mentioned that it has developed plans to recapture heat from its cement kiln to generate electricity, but adds that it cannot afford the capital expenditure to build it without an incentive or funding support from government programs. The production of clinker, the main ingredient of cement, from calcium carbonate releases carbon dioxide during the chemical reaction, and a carbon tax will impact on the prices of the company's products. To this end, AfriSam has estimated the impact of the carbon tax on its products and has communicated this to clients ahead of the implementation of the tax. AfriSam Cementitious Executive Hannes Meyer provides details about the company's efforts to reduce carbon emissions and possible electricity generation and electricity offset projects the company is exploring. We started off in the 1990s testing the water, new experience, investigating the possibilities of uh, things like uh, composite cements, which in, in, let's call it in the normal terms, is talking about extended cements. Uh, there were lots of negative connotations to it because lots of people said that it's a dilution of your cement. What we've discovered over time in actual fact, it gives you superior properties in, very, in many instances. And as we learned, we started picking up that process to an extent that uh, by the 2000s, we really make a step change. And we started really focusing on uh, composite cements, increasing the amount of additives that we uh, Introduced. Typically what we're talking about is fly ash and slag, granulated for brass finish slag, and limestone in South Africa as extenders. Um, that gave us a step change in the way we're manufacturing our cement uh, without compromising on quality and actual fact enhancing in many instances. The second change we've made is to look at upgrades of existing technology uh, where we introduced pre-cal signers uh, more preheater structures into our operations and then also other technical things like dip tubes, uh, mule flaps, etc. which is all focused at reducing the amount of fuel that you need. We've managed to reduce our carbon footprint by 35% uh, from 1990 to up to last year and we envisage to see another 1% reduction in this year. And obviously as we go along it becomes much more difficult and there's a bigger requirement for capital expenditure. Uh, talking about waste heat recovery, it's a quite an expensive process to retrofit a plant like this, one kiln line, in this instance, could easily cost you something between 300 and 400 million rand. Uh, in the process, you will recover typically about six megajoules of energy that you can convert into electricity, and obviously, fulfill a big part of the requirement for your normal electrical demand, which is another area which we focused on now that we talk about it in the past. We've replaced most of our energy inefficient electric motors with more electrical efficient motors. There's a few left, it's part of our capital plans. Over years we have improved the reactivity of our clinker and we want to take it to the next level where we start using the latest type of technology uh, elsewhere in the world. Not necessarily in clinker, but we will want to apply it to our clinker technology. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.